In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Let us pray. O God, who made the abbot St. Benedict an outstanding master in the School of Divine Service, grant, we pray, that putting nothing before love of you, we may hasten with a loving heart in the way of your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the command of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What are your endless sacrifices to me, says the Lord? I am sick of holocausts of rams and the fat of calves. The blood of bulls and of goats revolts me. When you come to present yourselves before me, who asked you to trample over my courts? Bring me your worthless offerings no more. The smoke of them fills me with disgust. New moons, Sabbaths, assemblies. I cannot endure festival and solemnity. Your new moons and your pilgrimages I hate with all my soul. They lie heavy on me. I am tired of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I turn my eyes away. You may multiply your prayers, I shall not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash, make yourselves clean. Take your wrongdoing out of my sight. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Search for justice. Help the oppressed. Be just to the orphan. Plead for the widow. The Word of the Lord I will show God's salvation to the upright. I find no fault with your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not ask more bullocks from your farms, nor goats from among your herds. I will show God's salvation to the upright. But how can you recite my commandments and take my covenant on your lips, you who despise my law and throw my words to the winds? I will show God's salvation to the upright. You do this, and should I keep silence? Do you think that I am like you? A sacrifice of thanksgiving honours me, and I will show God's salvation to the upright. I will show God's salvation to the upright. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our heart, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. It is not peace I have come to bring, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Anyone who prefers father or mother to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not take his cross and follow in my footsteps is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it. Anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And those who welcome me, welcome the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet will have a prophet's reward. And anyone who welcomes a holy man will have a holy man's reward. If anyone gives so much as a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is a disciple, then, I tell you solemnly, he will most certainly not lose his reward. When Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he moved on from there to teach 
and preach in their towns. The Gospel of the Lord Our readings today can seem rather scary at first glance. Because in the first reading, for example, it looks as if God has changed his mind towards the offerings, the sacrifices and the festivals that he himself, in earlier books of the Hebrew scriptures, asked his people to do and commemorate in his honour. And in the Gospel, it looks as if our image of Jesus as the peacemaker, the unifier, has been wrong all the while when he says, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace a sword. How then can we make sense of today's readings? Well, from the very same reading, I believe it is to realize that everything that we do, our worship, our prayers, and our love for neighbor, has to first and foremost be motivated by love for and of God. If not, everything that we do, however noble and good it may seem on the surface, will only be an empty ritual, self-glorification, and a facade. Which is why God says in the first reading that He despises the offerings, the sacrifices, and celebrations. For the people then were merely doing it without love, for their own gain, and for self-glorification. Not for true worship and love of God. Don't this also happen to us today at times, be it in our relationship with God, or one another. When there is no true love for God first, but love for self first, our love for neighbour becomes one that is based on usefulness, and our prayers to God becomes one that is merely out of habit, or ritual, or again, out of personal gain. When all that we do is first and foremost motivated by love for God, then whatever we do becomes a response to that love. In other words, we love father and mother like God loves, because God loves us first. We love our children like God loves, as that is our experience of God's love first. And we are willing to take up the daily crosses of life because we know God who loves is with us. How can we constantly and intentionally have God as the motivating factor to all that we do? Well, for a start, the prophet Isaiah tells us in the first reading, that we are to cease to do evil, learn to do good, search for justice, help the oppressed, be just to the orphan, plead for the widow. And in order to do this is to see Christ in the other, so that we may love the Christ in them. Very often we forget to see Christ in the other, in our actions. And that is why we only love according to our limited understanding and capacity, and according to how much we can gain from that love. Second, from the Gospel, when Jesus speaks about being that sword, we are to allow the Lord to cut us, cut us from all that keeps us from God. Very often we want to cling on to what we are comfortable and what is convenient. But this often only keeps us from truly loving Him, and in turn, from loving others. We are to allow Him to, so to say, cut us from these things so that we may love Him first and above all else. Saint Benedict, whose memorial we celebrate today, did just that by his life. He lived in a cave near Subiaco to contemplate, to deepen his love for God. Although it may seem rather extreme during his time, and even more today, sometimes this is what we need to do. In order to cut ourselves from the things that keeps us from loving God, we need to go away, to spend time with God and no one else, that we may again fall in love with the one who loves us first. Let us therefore, sisters and brothers, today and always strive to love God first, by seeing and so love the Christ present in our neighbour, and by allowing God to cut us from all that keeps us from Him so that even when we love our loved ones and neighbour, we will strive to love them sincerely. We will not be disheartened even when we are hurt by them, or even when we gain nothing from loving, just as how Jesus loved us even when we ourselves rejected and persecuted Him. Let us now pray the prayer 
that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal life, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of St. Benedict, we may faithfully serve your designs and love one another with fervent charity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May God bless us, keep us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <music>